If the only thing about country music that people know is Marin Morris, then that's something that we should all be very thankful for. The special something that Marin has is her ability to write in language that is relatable but true to herself. Marin is bigger than just country music. She isn't scared to make music that transcends country music. She's a universal artist. Someone. Country music is on the map right now. We're breaking the boundaries down. I can't say I'm going to go out and make a pop record or I'm going to go out and make this country record. I just want to make something that's good. I was done with the artist thing. I was 21. The novelty of being a kid on stage didn't exist anymore. I was background music at these bars. I was so overplaying for people that didn't care. I was singing songs I loved, but I was kind of going nowhere. What do I have to say right now? But music is a medicine. I remember just being a very shy kid, but I never remember a time when I wasn't singing. I think it was really just an unharnessed creativity and I was trying to figure out how to get my feelings out. It was clear that it was more than just, you know, wow, this little girl likes to sing. It was like, she's got a real gift. From then on, my parents managed me and would drive me around Texas for the next decade of my life. Okay, here we are. We're on the road. One more time in the car. One more time in the car. Back at the hotel. Every honky-tonk bar, rock club, I would play all of it. I tried out for American Idol, The Voice, America's Got Talent, a Nashville star, so many. And I didn't really make any of them. Thank you. I just hit a wall where I was so done. I loved singing still, but I wanted to be a songwriter like Dolly Parton. I mirror a lot of my choices off of what she's done. I think about how she's just handled everything with such grit and grace in a world full of men. I can identify with that. I wanted to focus more on being a better songwriter, and Nashville obviously was the place to do that. I would book rights with just friends I'd make at shows. I first met Marin in Nashville. There was like nine of us just playing songs. And when I finally heard Marin sing her own music, it was just devastating how good she is. I had a couple songs of mine that I wrote recorded by other artists, but I wasn't really seeing a ton of traction. Eight months to the day, I moved to town. I had $150 left in my checking account. It was like fight or flight. Those times were really hard. Nobody could sing these songs like you could. I'm not getting cuts because, like, nobody else can sing this as well as I can. And I think it's something that you just kind of come to terms with and then have to, like, dive in head first to go make your own record and your own project. And luckily, it all just, like, caught fire. Carla, the owner of my publishing company, booked me these rights out in Los Angeles. She said, you are an artist. Sing these songs you're writing. It took a long time for that to sink in because I didn't want to pursue that again. The day before I wrote with my friend Busby, I was driving around. I didn't know where I was going. I just remember thinking to myself, oh, this is like church to me. My church, like what would that look like? What's your version of spirituality? When do you feel the most okay? 
My version of that is in my car when I feel very alone and whatever song comes on is the perfect song. You know, with my church, she had that title and idea and she just filled it in from there. It just was sort of off to the races, you know? That was the first time as a songwriter I've ever been territorial about a song I had written. I got back to Nashville a couple days later. I played it for Ryan, who at the time was just, you know, my friend I was writing songs with. She goes, I just am terrified for anyone to hear this because I love it so much. The you song ended and he was like, he didn't say anything. He just goes, play it again. <laughs> <laughs> I was passed on twice by the same label here in town. We decided, why don't we just self-release this, see what happens. Yeah, that was kind of the, the start of everything was with that song. I had released my church independently and it amassed like a million streams in a week. It broke records for a new artist, me, an unsigned artist, chick out of Nashville. It just felt like pass on me again, because this is what happens. I wasn't there at the early days for Sheryl Crow or Adele, but it felt like what those people had to feel like when they first heard those artists. Can I check it? Certainly. It was in the presence of greatness. She was going to be massive. <laughs> Crazy. So many things start with like one song and like domino effect into big crazy ass moments. Guys, coming close, we'll do the announcement one more time. Closer, take a seat. <laughs> <laughs> so, we are here filming the music video. The middle. Boom. I received a demo for the middle that Marin sang. She gave it this gritty texture. She really felt what she was saying. And that's the most important thing. When a singer sings something, I want to be able to believe that and not just feel like somebody's reading a script. Why don't you just meet me in the middle? I'm losing my mind just a little. The middle was just such a cataclysm of a musical moment last year. It was kind of like the shot heard around the world. I am in love. This took me somewhere that I that wasn't Earth. I toured around the world and remember just seeing these crowds know that song feverishly. It was really amazing to be a part of a song like that. How many shows was that? Yeah. Enough. It was like 400 or something. <laughs> if I got to put my genre on the map and people heard the middle and they were like, who's this Marin Morris chick? Like, I want to see what she does. And then they go and listen to my church and then they're like, oh wait, who's this other artist that she's toured with? And they go listen to like Sam Hunt or whatever. It's it's about like opening the platform for our genre. Whew. How are we feeling so far? <laughs> Okay. It took 42 weeks at the at the chart to finally hit number one, but this was my first number one song. It's called I Could Use a Love Song. Love song that takes me back just like that when it comes on. I really wanted to showcase a side of myself to the radio that was more vulnerable. Out of such jadedness about love came my first number one, which I'll never forget. Grammy award winner, Marin Morris.
I think last year really opened my eyes to the reach that my version of country music could have. It doesn't seem crazy to have dreams to sell out arenas someday. I think Marin is one of the bravest artists I've seen in a long time. I think she really sings about who she is and what she stands for, and she takes risk. Good art is scary, and it's risk-taking, and it changes culture. I just think about how much oppression it had to take for people to really start opening up. That perspective is so desperately needed to be heard. It makes me feel like I want to be better, put braver music out, say braver things, wear braver things, like, screw it. It's time to put our money where our mouth is and not just talk about the lack of representation and do something about it. I'm talking about my friends of color, my friends of different sexualities that deserve to have a, a, a voice in country music as well, so. We're, we're fighting the good fight. Writing my next album, Girl, felt so good because seeing the wave of support that women were starting to have with each other, it's really powerful. As a woman, as a human being, as a songwriter, I think I'm making some of the most honest music of my career. We went places we weren't uh, maybe ready to go to for the first album. So with this one, it's super experimental and sexual, and it's very independent. And when it came time to make this video and visual representation of these lyrics, it ended up being like, how many different faces of women could we show? It was a, a heavy topic that whether we've liked to or not, we've all witnessed moments like that that like make the hairs on our body stand up. It's probably one of my proudest works to date and premiering it here at YouTube. I was talking to um, probably a lot of you and just fans that were like sending questions and comments in. It was so exciting for me as the artist to really get that instant gratification. It was very cool and forward thinking. Like that's how people are gonna unveil things now through YouTube and the way that you can do it so personally is what makes it even cooler. You think about the way that people consume music now and it's so easy to just discover your favorite artists and you don't have to love just one genre because people are discovering music outside of the radio. Marin just had the highest streaming debut for any <laughs> female yeah. in the country genre ever. So yeah! Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I've had a really great few years when it comes to love. That kind of love that pushed me to, to be more open and more resilient and brave. After getting married and doing this crazy international tour. My career is, it's my name, it's, it's my personality, it's my music, but I feel so much more responsible for others now than I ever have. It's not just about me anymore. I don't even think she knows how special she is. We need females like her in country music. We needed her right when she came along. I hope that I've made someone feel like they could be brave. And I'm just hoping that whatever I'm doing right now is cool enough to inspire another nine-year-old to be like, I'm gonna be Marin Morris someday.